So today we'll be discussing about the probability distribution curve and how you can get returns like this or this for your trading. So stick around. So probability distribution curve is used heavily by option traders and they use this to calculate their um, deltas and how far away out of the money you want to get the option to sell the option or to buy the option and things around those nature but it's not used by swing traders and day traders and I think they are missing out on some great opportunities. Uh, the advantage of this probability distribution curve is essentially you get the odds in your favor, it gets the statistics in your favor and you get to find trading opportunities which have got more statistical edge. So I'm just gonna go to the uh, probability distribution article in Wikipedia, I'm not going to go detail into everything, but I just want this thing here, this uh, distribution curve here. So basically, for people who don't know what the probability distribution curve, I'm just going to summarize it. It's like the distribution curve for the people. Um, let's take an example here. Let's say the height of uh, people in a classroom of the whole world. Let's say the height of the people at 15 years old. So the majority of the people will be somewhere between a certain height range. So let's assume it's five foot five and five foot seven. So 68% of the people will be in that group. And there will always be a certain group of people which will be higher uh, than that 68%. So that'll be outside of one standard deviation or two standard deviation if he's like seven foot tall, if he's uh, Shaquille O'Neal or something. And then there will be people in the extremely short um, high category as well. So the same way we could actually um, come up with um, different weights as well, like people's weight. Um, and this normal distribution curve is basically seen everywhere, even in pandas and pandas weights and animals and everything. So the statistical measure can be really good in finding great opportunities. So what I did essentially was um, I took the Apple stock data till 2018, just, just to uh, give you an example on how the uh, percentage uh, change is being taken into uh, a data frame. And then I actually calculate the percentage change in the normal distribution curve. So you can beautifully see this amazing uh, normal distribution curve um, similar to the normal distribution curve that we saw in our uh, example in the heights in the Wikipedia picture. So we can actually calculate everything from like the mean to the variance to standard deviation. Um, and now what I've got is I've actually got the graph here. And then on top of that, I've uh, drawn like a curve. So that kind of shows similarity to the normal distribution and most of it average being around 0%, 0.00, .00 or uh, the mean. So now if I can draw a normal distribution curve on top of it, just to see how similar it is to the normal distribution curve, you can see it's pretty similar, except that it might be more percentage might be on the 0.00 percentage. But you can see the other two uh, extreme levels, that's like 5%. So we'll be focusing on that 5% because that's where we'll be planning our trading ideas on. So. Uh, by looking at this graph, I can see that the amount of trades that are below 5% or above 5% are very low. So um, I'll just look at the data, number of data that I have, and that's, that's 2,264. And I'll just calculate how much data I have when it's below 0 0.05, and that's 13. Now I can go deeper and see how much is the data between 0 0.05 and less than 0 0.06, and that'll be just 10. So you can see the amount of information that I can get just from this um, uh, Python software, but we're not gonna go deep into it. It's only data from 2018, so the numbers are much less than what we have right here. But I'm just showing you, giving you an example on how I dissect this information and then come up with trading ideas. So anyways, we're gonna take these 5% and then I'm gonna code this in trading view in this fine script platform i've actually done five percent decline so i'll actually enter whenever i have a, a five percent decline because that's what i'm looking for in the distribution curve so let's see this trade here as an example and um, before that i'll just change the settings from one contract to 100 percent equity um so we've got 1100 12 percent with a drawdown of 15 percent the drawdown is a bit heavy but other than that the profit factor looks good the percent profitable looks 50 percent which all looks amazing so let's take this example here which happened on the 2nd of november 2020 and 
um, the previous day the market had gone down by five percent so that gave us a chance for entry because the amount of times the market will be down below five percent is quite rare and then once we are below that level the chances for us to be above five percent is like massive it's like uh, more than the one standard deviation or two standard deviation so you're looking at 60 70 more than 70 or 80 percentage so um I enter there and I exit. I'm not going to give away when I exit. Now, if you want to know when I exit or the reasons to exit, you can download the code. It's there in the description. So you can play around with the exits there. I've used um, a special kind of an ex uh, exit, which can be helpful for you uh, in these kind of strategies. But there are many form of exit that you can do. But exit is really crucial. Uh, the number of trades in this strategy is quite low because we've chosen 5% as you saw here in the um, distribution, the amount of trades or the length, the amount of uh, trades can go down. So mind you, this is 2018. So the data we here go here is to 2021. So the amount of trades will go up. So this is just for Apple stock. Now, if you try it in any other stock, like let's say Microsoft, say for instance. So here we've got 103% and 34% drawdown. Now, the reason why this performance is not that great in Microsoft is because that 5% data that we've got from here um, is only for Apple. So this data is for Apple and it's for Apple that we found out that 5% is kind of below the two standard deviation or 5% uh, is above that two standard deviation. But for uh, Microsoft, this can be quite different. So for each stock, the uh, strategies can completely change based on that you have to find out whether it should be five percent or ten percent or two percent or one percent and that's the way you should create strategies now it's quite difficult to find an accurate number for all the stocks uh, so you have to do manually for maybe thousands of stock to find out what the five percent is or what not the five percent is so uh, in my course what I did is I've, I've found out a number which kind of suits it and I, I didn't use the average true range I use something which is a derivative of the average true range which takes the values of the daily ranges and calculate something based on that and that has given me quite a great amount of return um, for that and that result is only available in my course and that's given 742 percent this is for the spy and with just a drawdown of just 11 percent so you can actually leverage this substantially you can go threes to and leverage if you're able to take out a drawdown of 33 percent so then you will get almost 2000 percent return 2200 percent return or even go even heavier go 44 percent four times leverage so then you're having a drawdown of maximum drawdown at 44 percent and then you're having you know almost 3,000% return. So uh, it's really difficult from a standard basis to identify which value as the average true range you have to use. You have to come up with lots of data. But if you want to do individually, like individual stocks like Apple or individual stock like um, Facebook, doing that probability distribution curve and trying to find out that extreme standard deviation might be a good platform to start with. Now, even here, the same strategy which I applied in Facebook, it seems to work with a minimal drawdown of 100% return. JP Morgan, it didn't work. Procter & Gamble, it worked. Visa, let's try Visa. Visa, it worked. Alibaba, Microsoft. Microsoft works pretty splendidly with 1,645% drawdown. Walmart. And then you know it just keeps on going so basically the idea is um, for each of the strategies that I've created it tends to work practically in most of the stocks but in order to find out that 5% that can be a bit of a struggle um, so if you want to perform strategies on a specific stock, I really recommend you find out which is that two standard what is that two standard deviation and then you can work like a reverse engineer and try to find out which strategy can be suited now like i said in the introduction of the video 
this problem of OTN statistics is used heavily by option traders and there's a reason why option sellers are kind of successful to a certain extent and that's because they are getting at least some of their statistics in their favor as compared to the day traders and the swings traders and the future traders but the problem is that they're not getting any statistics in their favor they're just randomly uh, picking a trade idea that's decided by somebody and they're just trading it and the only way they're using the statistics is in their risk reward ratio and most of them they tend to mess about in that front as well so I hope you guys got an idea on how to um, come up with trading ideas from the probability distribution curve. You can come up with tremendous amount of ideas with the probability distribution curve. It can be like instead of the one standard deviation, you can actually have uh, multiple days below the one standard deviation. So maybe like one day or two days. So I've actually given the code of the first program in the description box. So you can actually download that and tweak it accordingly for your change and then um, do it specifically for each stock, optimize it specifically for each stock and get some good returns. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Have a great day.